Hey everybody, Wayne Bogan here. Today's video is going to be focused on preparing the base camp to install the new batteries. So I need to come in, remove the table, remove the bench, and look to see about pulling everything out from the battery box. So let's go inside and I'll show you what we're going to do. Alright, so as we look at the base camp, the first thing I need to do is take the table out. I'm going to lower the table and then I'm going to come down and remove the screws at the base of the table and move it into my garage. Then I need to get underneath the bench and under the bench are these brackets. We should be able to come in and remove and they go around the bottom and there's actually one also in unfortunately the battery compartment so I've got to figure out how to get there and then we'll have the screws from the stands. I'll need to remove those. The bench is tied together in two pieces, so I'll take that out. So let's get to work. Um, I'll give you a quick view as I go through and do this, and then we'll see what we find and how easy or difficult this is from here. So now I've gotten all the screws out except for one that I'll show you in a second. So you can pull this portion of the bench out. And the next challenge is the last bracket is down inside the battery bank. So I'm going to remove the sides of the battery bank and look to see what it's going to take for me to get to the screws to remove the, the bench off of this side. Okay, so for the next step, I've gotten the panel off, but there's one screw on this leg that I've got to get loose. And there's a bracket, like the others I've been working on, back underneath this far corner. So I'm going to disconnect the battery. Um, I brought some additional light in. I've got a drop cord pulled from my garage. We're going to get in and get that out to make sure there's no electricity in and then try and get those last set of screws out and we'll see how that goes. All right, so let's look at a little bit of the fun issue. So this is the last leg. I was able to get this screw and this one out, <laughs> but the last screw, I'll even show you, is back around behind. So I've got to get this last bracket out but if you look at the bracket, it's a little bit different than the others. There is a single screw, silver screw, into the wall. So I'm undo that one screw. That's a little bit different than the others, where I was able to come in and leave the brackets in place, but just get the screws connecting into the, the seat itself. So I'm gonna go through, undo that one screw. That should give me a chance to potentially somehow get back into this one and we'll remove it. Okay. I may have not gotten a good time lapse of this last screw, but that was a bit of a bear getting in between that wall, the post. But now this gives you a good view of the battery compartment without anything there. So I've got the second segment of the, the bench off to the side. You can see a hole in the floor for all the wires to come in, brackets that are holding everything in place. Uh, obviously you can see my BM712 and my VE Direct that I had installed for uh, Bluetooth monitoring on the system. So next I'm going to take some pictures, some good view shots of how everything is connected. I'm going to come back in and disconnect uh, 
well actually first I'm gonna come in and remove the battery compartments I've got to decide what I want to do with the hole here because we have this exhaust pipe for the lead acid batteries even though we have AGM um, I need to see about covering that hole or I've debated putting an exhaust fan there to, to get heat out of this compartment then I need to come in chase all the wiring and make sure I understand where everything is going and then look to see about removing the solar charge controller so that I can put it on top of my batteries slide the batteries as far as I can up here on the edge uh, and then be able to come back and lay those out I'll need to take this wall out and as you can see the only thing holding it in place are the little brackets on the floor uh, this piece of wood that's here with it so we'll take that out and take this wall out and then I'll come back and work on bringing the batteries and putting the new batteries in the space and putting the inverter over here on the side so we'll take a look at that and see how well that works uh, and I'll give you a good view of that as I go through So while I'm here, I thought it might be interesting for those who aren't going through this upgrade but do want to put in a, BM, a BMV 712 battery monitor. So this is my battery shunt that I put in connected to the battery bank. So what I took was the, uh, the negative line coming off the negative post, which is a white wire here, and I connected that on the battery side of the shunt. Uh, coming back in for pulling anything out as well as any loads that I wanted to put on I put a new two gauge wire going from the uh, battery side versus the draw side back over to the battery as you can see it goes here and then this is where you plug in your uh, 712 monitor if you want to have that I didn't use it I was actually just using the Bluetooth but it's a it's a tight space but it lets you come back in and connect and I just screwed it in right here next to the wall next to the battery so it was a nice short connection coming from the shunt over to the battery using the wire that was already there um, and then the you do put a, a power connection for this red wire uh, which I have disconnected and you put that on the positive terminal to give power to the, the 712 the other item I put in place was a uh, V direct for solar monitoring of the the blue solar and so that's this device that allows me to come back in and you can see it still has power because the, sar the charge controller has power coming in with just a little bit of sunlight we've got left in the day and that's just a simple connection with this V uh, the connection that was there previously is well, kind of slidden back in the back but this is the connection that goes into the wall over by the sea level monitor so I disconnected this one it plugs in the same spot plugged in the VE direct and then that allowed me to monitor via Bluetooth what was happening on my charge controller so hopefully that'll help you as well so here's a quick view of the battery um, the two batteries we're connected with this positive cable from the two positive ends but you can see the positive coming from battery number one over into the container and the negative over to the container so I'm gonna finish disconnecting these pull the battery bank out and I continue pulling the rest of the uh, equipment out so that you can see what those look like at this point okay so one of the next steps so a closer view of the cabling coming in from the floor uh, I want to pull up the battery box here but it is connected to a vent underneath just like that one so I've got to pull this up and get it disconnected down below one of the other items I did just to be safe is I actually took the 40 amp fuse um, out of the connection coming from the charge controller over to the bus bar just to make sure that I didn't have another live wire down in here so let me go through and finish taking the rest of this out and getting down into the rat's nest and seeing what's down below okay 
I have a bit of a mess, so let me show you where I am. So these are the cables coming out from underneath the trailer. Uh, the black cable and this gray cable um, are coming in from the brake controller and from the 7-way. Uh, I will have to trace down the, the two blue ones and see exactly where they're coming from. The red and the black are the ones that I pulled in for the power jack. The feather small black one is the ones that I had pulled in from a tire minder to be able to come in and uh, use it. So I've actually taken this off the wall. It was held by two screws, one in the top corner, top right corner. Uh, the fuse is out from the charge controller. And so now this lets me start tracing down all of the wires to look to see what we have and what's under there. So I'll get in now and start chasing each of these and I'm going to come in and label each of those with a label maker so I know exactly where they are, such as the ground from the charge controller. Right? Uh, these two wires going back, uh, one of them I think goes to the battery disconnect because the other is coming over to what had been connected to the batteries. And so I'll look to see what I leave in place and what I take apart. Um, I could leave these here and then just bring this over to the Lynx distributor so I have a connection into the battery. Uh, and then take the solar charge controller off, put it on top of the other batteries. Uh, but I'm going to see how all this fits in. I did take down this other little wall. So that was just held in place by two screws sitting right here next to that one. Um, I want to make sure that I do keep it such that I can continue to use the master disconnect switch. Uh, and so now I'm going to come in and try and see if I can get to the top of these cables from inside of the cabinet. Then I'll pull out um, the breaker panel and the fuse panel and see if I can get in to those and go through and just line each of those pieces up. All right, so let's uh, keep digging and see what we find. Okay, so the dilemma time. So I've come in, chased a lot of the wires, I've taken the uh, charge controller off, I've put it onto the uh, batteries so that I can get that set up. Um, I was just going through and looking at where all these cables are. Here's your power coming in from the solar panels. We have the seven way and the pin items here. And then I cut a piece of cardboard that should be the same size of the bottom of the batteries. And so my debate is, can I get by with bringing the battery in without having to move the seven way and cut another wire? I'm not sure that I can. Uh, the other item that I've run into is trying to get access to the shore power cable. So let me show you a little closer view of that. So I started looking at the cabling and these two orange wires, one is going to the air conditioner, one is coming from shore power. But as I chase them down, they both go back behind the shower. No idea why. So I, I get these other cables going back for the different electrical connections and wiring. So let me get a little closer view to the other side. So let the fun begin. You see the orange connector on the wall. That is the um, smart plug coming in from the shore power. It comes in and goes down to the floor and then you see two lines going back and they're going back under the, sh the shower panel. Not sure why, but now I've got to figure out how to pull that out, at least the one for the shore power, not the one for the air conditioner. Get that back, uh, because it, it does come back around and connects back in here. Um, so I may just leave it, but anyway, I've got to chase that down, look at it from the back of the panel and see if I can get that loose and get it over. I probably have enough cable just to get it over to the batteries. So I've got to play around with that a little bit more as I'm labeling the cables. But that's one of those I'm watching for to make sure that I have enough space and enough extra cable 
bring in and bring the main shore power over to my MultiPlus. And then I'll run a separate wire bringing it from the MultiPlus back over to the uh, Progressive Industries uh, breaker and fuse panel here. As I looked at placing the battery down in this area, it didn't quite fit much as I wanted to. Uh, so I'm going to have to pull these cables back down through the hole that's already been drilled in. And to do that, I need to disconnect the cables from their different slots, whether it was on this panel in the, the neutral lines or on the positive. So I've gone through and labeled each of these, just doing a one, two, three, four, five and then have either a negative or a positive on the wires. So I'm going to take those, disconnect those, then I'm going to take the wire here, drag it and pull it back underneath. Uh, once I place the battery down, then I'll be able to come back and see where I can drill again. Now, looking at the drill, there is a, a frame support somewhere back in this area. So I'll get it as close as I can over to that support. Over here out of the way, once I lay down the battery and put the Victron Multi Plus down beside it to see what would be a good spot to bring these wires back up and still minimize the use of the space in this area. But this was the easiest way I could find to, to get those out. I'll push this out of the way. Uh, I was able to disconnect and get the short power line coming back in between my hot, my neutral, and uh, the ground. So I've got this here ready to connect into the short power and I bought some additional um, wire to connect from the the Victron Multi Plus back into the power panel. Now this wire is 10-2, but I've actually bought, excuse me, 10-3. I've also I've bought 6-3 that I'm gonna bring back over into the panel just to have uh, extra capacity just in case we need it. Don't think we ever would, but I'd rather have that just in case the air conditioner and uh, something else is running that I'm pulling both from the 30 amp shore power as well as pulling from the Multi Plus and the batteries in the power assist to cover both the hair dryer and the air conditioner at the same time. All right, so we'll get all this pulled out, get it cleaned up. Then I'm gonna come down and put the battery, uh, which I have over here to the side, lay it down, see if it fits. Uh, and then I'm gonna try and work on securing the battery down to the floor, starting the wire process of getting everything back in, uh, getting the AC and DC powered in the panel, removing the converter, and lining those up. But wanted you to be able to see the connections I'm going to have to disconnect, how I've labeled them so I can reconnect those coming out of the seven way uh, and making sure that we have everything from the brakes and the seven way lined up. Alright, so now I'm under the trailer. So this is the seven-way connection coming in from the side. You can see the tire minder that I have lined up. The red and wire the red and black wires uh, are coming in from my electric jack. This is from the tire minder. So I'm gonna take and pull these down. Um, so they've got a clip that's tying it in here. Let's see if I can add some light to that. Yep, so they got a clip holding it in there, so I'll need to be able to pull it down, get it out, and then I'm gonna need to find another spot to bring it back up in. So hang with me and I'll take this down. All right, so now that I have the, the wires pulled out and out of the way, um, I'll put the grommet back in the hole uh, just to cover it up and this white stuff hanging down is uh, the great stuff insulation that I sprayed in just to keep anything from bugs or other rodents getting in. I'll come back and pull the grommet out and I'm going to put uh, some sheet metal over top of this, screw it in and cover it up, seal it off so that this is closed off 
and then we'll find a good spot to drill our new hole somewhere over in this area. Um, so again, they have the beam, so if you're inside looking against the main wall, get this this other area we've got to worry about in the main beam for the frame. So we'll have to avoid that and then cover this other areas.